and starting of this man while we see, the ruffian son of a high-ranking noble family. Then we see the villain of this story, who is sitting in his room, and he is reading a letter, and now reigning over the academy like a king. And it is written in the letter, the sin of using imprudent profanity in the presence of the honorable princess Venia, the sin of wrongfully meddling in the holy Sylvania Academy entrance exam, the sin of disregarding decency, and the sin of smearing the family name, blinded by jealousy, are all sins that cannot be taken lightly. And Roth Thaler is saying, in short, are they removing me from the family register? It feels like the god of fate is ridiculing me. After this, Roth Taylor is thrown out of the dorm room, and Roth Taylor doesn't know where to go now. And also when Roth Taylor's classmates see him, they say about him, Look, isn't that at Roth Taylor? What's the point of walking on eggshells around him now? Apparently, he was disowned, so he's even empty his dorm room. Then we won't see him next semester, huh? He shouldn't have rigged the entrance exam in the first place. Filthy noble. I knew this would happen. And Roth Taylor is very disappointed with himself. Honestly, this is unfair. Because the arrogant, E.D. Roth Taylor, you people are talking about. And tears are coming from Roth Taylor's eyes. He is not able to understand what is happening to him. Then Roth Taylor tells us his story, how he came into this world, and he says, I entered a game. Based in the magic school. Silliani Academy. My favorite game. The failed swordsman of the Sylvania. Usually, when you enter a game inside Webtoons, you possess either the first son of a Chable, a genius ruffian young clan master, or a SSS rank hunter character who breaks the rules. Of all the possibilities, I'm a third-rate villain who gets kicked out of the dorms at the beginning of the game. I possess the worst of characters at the worst of timing. But nothing is going right with Roth Taylor. And in the middle of the way Roth Taylor is shouting, This isn't fair. You can't be serious. I've always lived a frugal and simple life without any greed. And Roth Taylor's classmates overhear his words, and one of them says, Look at him. He's saying it's unfair after everything he has done. He's saying he's frugal and simple. That scumbag. And a girl says on Roth Taylor's face, Shameless. And Roth Taylor becomes silent after listening to their words. Then Roth Taylor's classmates leave that place and Roth Taylor is looking at his state. Roth Taylor's condition is very bad. And he is looking at his face in a mirror, and Roth Taylor is surprised, then he is saying, but the reason E.D. Roth Taylor is the worst starts now. Roth Taylor is saying after seeing his state, even the farmer NPC had a stamina of five. He's attending the faculty of magic, yet his intellect is crawling on the floor, and that stamina is just way too low, even for a noble. No wonder. He was originally just a third-rate trashy villain who appears in the early scenarios. Even in my memory, he's basically a blur. I can't even recall what happened to him later on in the... But then Roth Taylor remembers something. In a corner of the ending credits, he was begging, looking like a damn bum. No surprise there. The ruffian who knew nothing about the world was suddenly thrown onto the streets. So he's lucky he's even alive. Why was it me? How did I possess this body? I don't know the reason for this, nor do I have any way to find out. But I won't let that be my ending. I'm going to make it no matter what. Rather than a school, the academy is closer to being a city with the entire Arkan Mountains as its premises. This place is in the northeast of the academy, the undeveloped forest. I was trying to escape the prying eyes of the students, and ended up walking for half a day. That's plenty of time to understand the situation I'm in. At the point when Ed was just disowned, it was the extreme starting part of the scenario. Fortunately, even though he was disowned by his family, he had not been expelled from the school yet. This is extremely important. Because in the setting, Sylvania Academy is a top-notch academy. As long as you graduate from it, you are guaranteed a secure future. And as long as the game is set in the academy, I can use the intel of a five-time dedicated player of the game to its fullest. That means if I just graduate quietly, I can live a way more comfortable and awesome life than the one I left behind in the past world. So obviously, my goal is to graduate. The issue is the enormous tuition fees. This semester must already be paid for, 
so if I can just get a scholarship for the next semester. With his stats, can I get the scholarship? I think LD be lucky to not flunk. I can think about the tuition later, but first, I gotta think about the urgent matter. Things I need to survive right now, then Roth Taylor puts the suitcase down and opens it, then Roth Taylor is saying, for around the next week. How can I avoid turning into a bum? And there are some items inside the suitcase, like showy clothing, ceremonial dagger and ornamental cup. But there is no stake for these things. And looking at all the clothes he said, Roth Taylor is saying, I have enough clothes. As for food and shelter, the problem is I don't have a place to stay or food to eat tonight. Given this guy's reputation, it'll be hard to get a job. I can't go to the dorm I was kicked out of either, so I guess I'm stuck here in the woods for the time being. I'm glad there's at least a stream nearby. Ten days until school starts. Until then, let's make myself suitable for attending school. And Roth Taylor uses the wind blade spell, which allows him to chop some wood, thankfully. He can use spells. It is fascinating, though. Am I seriously exhausted to death after cutting just fifteen tree trunks? Damn it, this only made me hungrier. It's not that useful. At least feed me before you kick me out. Do you get hungry when you use magic? I'm hungry. Very hungry. I remembered something my grandfather told me when I was young. When barley humps hit when he was a boy, he said he'd eat tree bark in the back mountains. And Roth Taylor lights the fire using the ignition. And he is boiling tree bark. Anything edible is good for me. And Roth Taylor is speaking after looking at the tree bark. Oh, if you don't look closely, it looks like chicken breast. Then Roth Taylor starts eating tree bark, but Roth Taylor finds its taste very bad. Then half a day passes, and Roth Taylor is still collecting wooden barks. But due to hunger, Roth Taylor's body has become weak and he is saying, after starving for a day, and throwing up for two, I came to the conclusion that wood should be used for building homes. First, you need to raise the frame that supports the wood. I only have two hands, but there are four supports. This really isn't an easy job. And the wood falls on Roth Taylor, due to which Roth Taylor starts getting very angry. And he starts tying the wood again. The shelter's frame is finally complete. Still a long way to go. I can't sleep on the bare ground, after all. It's kind of a waste, but it's not like I have a choice. Then Roth Taylor goes to sleep. And the next morning he wakes up but Roth Taylor is saying, Ha! This is fierce, I tell you, fierce. I barely managed to finish it. And as soon as Roth Taylor finishes making the shelter, he gets a notification, and it is written, Your creation is complete. Your crafting proficiency has increased. New completed project, basic wood shelter. A shelter where you can rest for a while. It is crude and shabby. Without constant maintenance, it will outlive its usefulness in no time. Crafting difficulty. Life skills details rank novice craftsman. Specialty none. Handiness level 4. Design level 1. Gathering ability level 1. But Roth Taylor is sad after seeing the system notification, and he says, so the crafting system's popping up as is too, huh? E.D. lived his life as a noble, so he may not have known. He is more talented with his hands than with magic. And right now, I need that handiness. After this Roth Taylor gets a notification, a new completed project. Simple harpoon. A ceremonial dagger strapped to a well-sharpened tree trunk. It can be used for fishing or hunting, but it lacks sharpness. Crafting difficulty. And Roth Taylor has made a harpoon, and he wants to do hunting with the help of a harpoon. And he says, let's get something proper to eat. Two days on an empty stomach. Excessive physical labor. I definitely shouldn't be able to move right now, yet it must be desperation that is keeping me moving. I want to eat meat. Roth Taylor has finally caught two fishes, and with the help of Ignition Roth Taylor is cooking the fishes. A week until school starts. I just have to hold out as I am right now. If I simply manage to hold out until then, I'll be able to get through school without much trouble. Then suddenly Roth Taylor hears a voice, and Roth Taylor looks back, but Roth Taylor is saying, I was so busy surviving that I forgot something important. And a girl comes behind Roth Taylor, and seeing her, 
Roth Taylor recognizes who she is. And Roth Taylor says she is the main character, but of all the people, I didn't expect to run into her over here. And Roth Taylor remembers that this girl had kept Roth Taylor tied with the help of her guard. And that girl's guard had brought Roth Taylor to this girl. And this girl had told Roth Taylor to disappear from this academy. And the name of this girl is Princess Fenia. And this girl tells Roth Taylor that you have not left this place yet. And this is the person who kicked E.D. Roth Taylor out of the dorms. Ed Roth Taylor is a villain that appears as soon as you start the game. Using his status as a noble, he hits on the Moe's childhood friend, only to end up being punished. Not stopping there, with a vengeful heart, Ed maliciously adjusts the MC's entrance exam for Sylvania Academy, but is then caught by a girl who came to take the entrance exam while hiding her identity, Fionia Elias Klo. Klo Empire's third princess. The Princess of Fenia. And Princess Fenia activates her skill and Princess Fenia's skill is insight. Detecting the target's lies and conspiracies, E.D. Rostaler, who was caught in a sad state, gritting his teeth making excuses, had all of his lies exposed by Fionia's insight, and then chased out of the dorms. Everyone at the academy may hate E.D. Rostaler, and Princess Fenia is saying to Rothtaler, What are you doing here? But he met someone that you shouldn't meet the most. And Princess Fenia says, You're saying that the academy isn't expelling you? And Roth Taylor says, It's just, I still am a student here. But I was still chased out of the dorms. And Princess Fenia says, I'll keep my word short. Princess Fenia shouts at Roth Taylor asking him to leave this place, and she further says, I can't stand to see a shameless person like you around this school. I will talk to them academic department and personally request your expulsion. For the crime of committing a dishonorable act as a student of the academy. For the crime of setting up a fellow student in an attempt to block their path to a better future. Roth Taylor is not bothered by Princess Fenia's words. He is thinking about his food. Burning. It's burning. After starving for three days, my precious food, while the burning food is an issue, I thought you were going to keep it short. This is a life crisis in many ways. This person Fenia's princess really has the power to get me expelled. Since that's the case. Then Roth Taylor says to Princess Fenia, The sun will set soon. Aren't the royalty always guarded by heavily armed soldiers? To think that a noble princess would come to an isolated forest like this alone. Princess Fenia gets angry after listening to Roth Taylor, and she says, If you're trying to threaten me knowing that I don't have escorts, then you will regret it. And Roth Taylor says, What do you mean threaten? Then Roth Taylor bends down on his knees in front of Princess Fenia. Then he says, I'm simply trying to thank the princess. And Princess Fenia activates her skill insight. And she starts checking whether Roth Taylor is lying or telling the truth. And when she checks, she finds that Roth Taylor is telling the truth. There are no lies within Ed Roth Taylor's words. And Princess Fenia gets shocked after knowing that Roth Taylor is telling the truth. And Roth Taylor also notices that Princess Fenia is surprised. The Roth Taylor family that Ed belongs to is famous and influential. But using that name to exploit the citizens and doing human experiments for research into eternal life, to the MC, it's a trash family that is destined to be destroyed. The people of the family will all be imprisoned or executed. However, I was disowned. I may be cold and hungry right now, but it's still better than dying. In the long run it's rather good. So I need to convince Fenia like this without lying, or else I'll be expelled. No, I would be game over. Looking at the timeline, around when E.D. Ross Taylor is expelled, right now should be about a week before the schools start. Then what would be the reason for the princess to be here? And Roth Taylor is saying, having come here without any escort, and in simple clothing means, you must be completing the class placement test. And we are told, Quest Professor Glass's class placement test. It's a test to find magic beads hidden in the forest. And Roth Taylor is saying, Professor Glass's test is known to be quite vicious, of course. If it's the noble Princess Fenia, you'll be aiming for the best class, which would be the class A. But Princess Fenia says, are you trying to flatter me? You haven't changed a bit. As expected, I should request the Academy to expel you right dash. 
But Roth Taylor comes closer to Princess Fenia, then tells her, But without my help, you will never be able to enter Class A. If my words are a lie, then you can have me expelled. Then Roth Taylor tells Princess Fenia, If you go to the lake at the southeast of the forest, there will be a small grassy island. There will be a giant tree in the middle of that island. That tree is called the Marilda's Guardian Tree. There, you will find the present I had left. And Princess Finia is thinking about Roth Taylor. The E.D. Roth Taylor from three days ago was definitely a liar and a charlatan. I still vividly remember that sad state. However, the E.D. Roth Taylor just now. After this the scene shifts and we see the academy. And a professor is saying, the class placement test has officially ended. Take out the beads you have acquired. And his name is Glast and he's a magic professor. And the students bring the bead, and looking at the students' bead the glass says to them, All of you will start from class F. It is important to take note of the examiner's intent in a test. This test isn't just about finding any magic bead. And the glass says those who found beads that were lacking in magic power are the only ones to make class A. Only three of you found this type of bead. 6. Lortel and finally the one who found a bead at Guardian Tree of Marilda that had unusually high magic power. You there, who found the hidden bead, you shall be at the top of the class. After this the scene shifts towards Roth Taylor. And Roth Taylor is sitting near the lake, and he is saying, It's all burned. I don't even have the strength to use a spear anymore. And Roth Taylor has created something and the system is telling about it. A new creation, crude fishing rod made by cutting off twigs from the tree trunk with a dagger, silk thread taken from the fabric, and replacing the needle with a small nail. The durability is low and hard to tell if a fish has bitten. Crafting Difficulty Dash The third princess of the empire, Phoenicia Elias Clo, since she was young, Princess Phenia has seen through flattery and sophistry, thus sharpening her insight, which led to the creation of her innate skill. No one can ever escape from her. Insight. As such, there was no choice but to give her authentic information. But that also leads to a greater problem. The reason why prideful Princess Phenia will come to be called the Princess of Love, after facing failure during the class placement test, falling to class F, would then begin to change. However, if Fionia, who has great influence over the early scenario, finds the golden bead and enters class A, the scenario of the original story would collapse. Even if I manage to avoid being expelled, all the information I would have will then become useless. I'll be done for. Of course, top of the class, Lucy Merrill. The future might still not change. On the other hand, Princess Fenia is thinking, Insight will always see the truth. There really is a bead. E.D. Roth Taylor didn't lie. Though, this isn't a present. And Roth Taylor is thinking, Why did Princess Fenia hide her identity in the first place? She was embarrassed of the special treatment she would be receiving had her identity was exposed. She wanted to prove herself. She knew just by seeing the bead that it would offer the best results in the test. But Phenia couldn't take that bead, as finding it would be something that she didn't accomplish on her own. The title, Princess of Love, she would receive in the future, is not a skill or stat, but a title she would gain by walking the righteous path. I threw bait at the princess. Whether it was the truth or a lie likely didn't matter. The princess can always discern which it is, even if E.D. Rostaler really believed that the princess would fail the test. She had confidence in succeeding and rubbing it in his face. However, Ed Roth Taylor did not lie, as she wasn't able to enter Class A. The princess now, and Princess Phenia is saying, E.D. Rostaler, I will keep my eyes on you. Could no longer do anything and Roth Taylor has caught a big fish with a fishing rod. After this Roth Taylor is saying, I may be living in a place where I have to start running from early in the morning to get to school on time. Roth Taylor gets tired of running, then looking ahead, he says, but I'm back, at Sylvania Academy. Then Roth Taylor enters the school, and an announcement is being made in the school. The school opening ceremony shall now begin. It is nice to see that the students have made progress before starting this new semester. Enjoy the food prepared while listening. Also, our Sylvania Academic Society has been 
And some students are looking at Roth Taylor and saying about him, Ugh. Just look at him. How did he have the face to come to the opening ceremony? Does he really intend to continue attending here? Roth Taylor is not bothered by their words, and is eating his food and saying, I could hear the sweet whispers that welcomed me, who had survived. This is the reward for the victor. Let's enjoy it slowly. The goal is graduation. But students are still talking about Roth Taylor, and they all are saying, Isn't that E.D. Roth Taylor? The second year that showed a sorry state during the entrance exam? If you look closely, he feels a bit different. He sure eats quite mannerly. And Roth Taylor is saying, I don't have any ambitions, I just want to graduate. And the girls are saying, I heard that there's desserts made by the head chef of Ophelis at the table over there. Let's go eat it together. We can also talk about what happened over the vacation. What do you think, Annis? Sounds good, Clara. But a girl is looking at Roth Taylor, and she is saying, that's strange. Somehow, he feels like a different person. And Roth Taylor is thinking, I wish for nothing to happen. After this, today's the first day of school at Sylvania. And in the class a professor is saying, it's a new semester, and I'm excited to see the students in a new, improved form and to see the work that has been done by Sylvania Academic Society. Roth Taylor is saying, however, on the very first day, I was almost expelled. I didn't expect Phenia to tell the dean about me. Though from the way that cranky old man is talking with a smile on his face. It doesn't look like she said anything bad. Anyway, I barely managed to avoid it. Let's be careful, so that the story doesn't stray from the original. Life skills honed for survival. And magic training appropriate for a student of the faculty of magic. To get the best of the combination of the two, there's no better weapon than a bow. As my life skills become more proficient, and I become able to create good quality arrows, I'll be able to cast spirit or magic formulas to the arrows. Though of course, spirit formulas are outside, the realm of my talent. And when Roth Taylor looks ahead, he gets surprised, because in front of him a girl is sitting under a tree, and the name of this girl is Janica Faylover. Second year, top of the class, genius spirit sorcerer. Then Janica also sees Roth Taylor. And Janica says to Roth Taylor, So you're the amusing guy Marilda was talking about. And Janica comes close to Roth Taylor, and starts asking him, At Roth Taylor, right? I'm Janica Failover. I'm in my second year, same as you. You can call me Janica. And Roth Taylor is thinking, Huh? When did she get all the way here? And Janica is smilingly saying to Roth Taylor, Ah, are you surprised? Because I know about you? You see. This forest is the territory of Marilda, a high-ranking spirit. I've heard a lot about you from her. Ra Taylor is surprised to hear Janica's words and he says, The master of this forest told you about me? Then Janica says to Roth Taylor, Marilda's kinda nosy. With her attention all over the place, it's obvious she'd know about an unwanted visitor, right? And Ra Taylor is thinking, Unwanted visitor. I did kill a lot of them. I cut so many trees, too. And Janica starts coming closer to Roth Taylor, then she says, Don't sweat the small stuff, it's the natural order of things for creatures in the forest to catch and eat each other. Marilda doesn't get bothered by something like that, either. And Roth Taylor says, I guess even the huge wild wolf has a tender heart, huh? Roth Taylor turns his head to the other side, but Janica says smilingly, unexpected. Right. Janica further says, Ah, there's something I want to show you. Isn't it just cute and adorable? I signed a contract with him yesterday as soon as I saw him. Do you want to try touching him? And Janica moves her hand forward, and light is shining from her hand, seeing which Roth Taylor thinks, a contract? Is it a spirit? If I want to be friends with Janica, I just need to chime in at the right time, but... Roth Taylor tells Janica, I don't know what you mean. I don't see spirits. Or rather, I can't. And Janica gets shocked after hearing this, then she says, you can't see. Spirits? And Roth Taylor turns back, and starts leaving this place, and he says to Janica, yep. Anyway, I came here to get food, so I'll get going now. And Roth Taylor thinks, only by following the original storyline can I gain an informational advantage. Janica Failover, 
someone who holds significant importance in the original storyline, is someone I must never get close to. And Janica sees Roth Taylor going. She recalls Roth Taylor's words, then she says, It's just as you said, Marilda. He's a really fascinating guy. No matter how much I think about it, I think he really can't see you. Who is he? Also, I tried so hard to be kind to him, but he just answers with, Yep, what's yep supposed to be? Well, it's not like we won't see each other again. I can just find out from now on, right? After this, Roth Taylor is telling, the distance between my shelter and the student the area wasn't close at all. I barely make it in time leaving at dawn and running at full speed. Just by commuting to school, I'm doing something ridiculous that increases my stats. If I want to win the scholarship, I'll have to study more diligently. I write on a stone slab using a burned stick and borrow books from the student library. On my way home, I wash my sweaty clothes for daily wear. You think I'm done for the day after that? But no. I have to check if I have enough firewood, drinking water, and jerky for tomorrow's lunch. I can only sleep for four hours because of this. But that's not what bothers me the most. Then Roth Taylor says to Janica, Hey, how long are you going to keep following me? And Janica is surprised to hear this, and she says, Huh? You knew? And Roth Taylor says, It'd be stranger if I didn't. Don't you know who I am? I'm Ed Roth Taylor. The worst hooligan to exist, Ed Roth Taylor. Why do you keep hanging around me? Then Janica tells Roth Taylor, Well, that's other people's judgment of you, isn't it? I don't even know you yet. Roth Taylor gets a little surprised after hearing Janica's words, then he thinks, Right. Janica Failover was this kind of character. She may look naive and dumb on the outside, but she's really independent-minded. However, Knowing what's in store for her in the future, I just can't respond to her with a refreshing smile on my face. Because Janica Failover is the final boss of Act One. She's the only character who smiles to Roth Taylor. I didn't want to go this far, but... And Roth Taylor is saying to himself, I'm a villain, I'm a villain. I'm a scumbag. Then Roth Taylor tells Janica, In that case, since destiny brought us together, can you do me a favor? Janica becomes happy after listening to Roth Taylor. Then Roth Taylor says to Janica, As you can see, I'm a mess. I've been disowned by my family, and I'm in a pinch. Can you give me some money? And when Janica hears this, she gets a huge shock. And Roth Taylor further says, I mean, it's not like I won't pay you back. That's what friends are for, right? I'm only borrowing it for a bit. How much do you have? Then Roth Taylor is telling, Every year, Janica gets a scholarship for being the top of the class. But that doesn't just signify her excellence. Her background is so poor that without the scholarship, she can't enroll or advance to higher graduation in the school. The daughter in a small ranch, Janica. Her weakness is money. Janica is unable to say anything after listening to Roth Taylor, and so there is peace at this place for some time. Then Janica says sorry to Roth Taylor, and Roth Taylor is thinking, Janica Failover, cut out. After this three days have passed, and Roth Taylor is saying, I don't feel great about it, but I don't want to get entangled with the important characters anymore. Let's be careful. So that the story doesn't stray from the original. Then he comes near his house, and Roth Taylor is very tired, so he goes inside to rest. But as soon as he looks in front, he becomes very surprised, and he says, What the hell? In terms of importance, She's a character with an even heavier presence than Janica. The subject of marvel of her classmates, and even professors. The rare genius and the most powerful character of. The failed swordsman of Sylvania. And a little girl is sleeping inside Roth Taylor's house. And the name of this girl is Lucy Merrill. And Lucy Merrill wakes up hearing Roth Taylor's voice. And Roth Taylor is thinking, why the hell is she sleeping here? What is she even doing in this mountain valley? Original storyline. Careful. Lucy Merrill says, You're so loud that I can't sleep. And Roth Taylor is saying, What should I do now? And Lucy Merrill points a finger at Roth Taylor's back and says, That wolf over. There, which is as big as a house. It keeps talking to you. When Roth Taylor looks back, he is followed by a spirit wolf. And Lucy Merrill is telling Roth Taylor, 
It's asking you to someday. And the spirit wolf says to Roth Taylor, Save Janica at all costs. Then the next day, Roth Taylor is going towards the forest, and he is saying, Lucy had only been at the camp for two days. Let's get to work. This won't lead to anything, right? It didn't take me long to realize how complacent of a thought that was. After this the scene shifts, and we see that joint combat training is going on in the school. Joint combat training is literally a mock one-on-one -on -one combat exercise. To minimize the lethality as much as possible, the combat students mostly use fake weapons. Benevolent Princess Fenia. Golden Daughter Lortel. Spirit Sorcerer Janica. Slothful Lucy. Wicked Clevius. All of them are doing joint combat training. And Roth Taylor continues saying, I could go on and on, and the list wouldn't end. Even so, the most important person is the protagonist after all. Failing Swordsman Taylor. Is Taylor's match next? I already know the results, so I didn't pay much attention to the matches. Because the winners of the duels in the joint combat training episode were the first year students, the same as the protagonist, Taylor. Except for exactly one person. Then suddenly Janica comes to Roth Taylor, and seeing her, Roth Taylor is thinking, I can't believe she's running all happily to me after going through the pathetic experience of me asking her for money. Unlike Lucy, who's from the cat family, there's no doubt Janica is from the dog family. And Janica is saying to Roth Taylor, the list of matches is out. But Roth Taylor says, I'm not really interested. Then Janica says, why? Aren't you curious about your match, Ed? And then Roth Taylor remembers something, and he thinks, huh? Wait a minute. I have to. Fight as well? Ed Roth Taylor in the original storyline was already expelled by now, so who's going to be my opponent? Then we see Taylor. Which is saying, I shall perform, to the best of my ability. And seeing Taylor, Roth Taylor is thinking, yeah. Right now, it doesn't matter who I am fighting against. I need to pay attention to Taylor. Though it was from a world beyond the screen, I lived as a Taylor for so long. From miserable and vain bad endings to true endings that left long-lasting impressions, I completed that journey countless times. Among the countless routes, there wasn't a single route that wasn't arduous and difficult. I've already decided on taking care of my own life, but I'm cheering for you, Taylor. By the way. And then the announcement comes. I'm repeating the announcement. Lucy Merrill. Is there a student named Lucy Merrill? Please come up to the arena once you're ready for the practice match. Where did Lucy go? Then Lucy Merrill comes to the training ground, and seeing Lucy Merrill, Roth Taylor is thinking, Ist year, top of the class. Lucy Merrill. Versus Taylor McClure. The protagonist of this world, born to be a swordsman, has never held a sword before in his life. Yet, with the first swing of his sword, he cuts through Lucy's lightning-quick magic. The spell she had thought would obviously hit was blocked, catching her off guard, as Taylor closed the distance. Surprised, Lucy hits him with a lightning strike, an intermediate-level lightning magic. Taylor is then completely overpowered by the reflexively cast magic spell, but Lucy is disqualified for using intermediate-level magic, earning Taylor the honor of being the first to defeat Lucy Merrill. It was a legendary scene. Then the referee starts the match and Taylor goes ahead to attack first. And Lucy Merrill creates a shield to stop his attack. And she easily blocks his attack, and throws Taylor away with another attack. Due to which Taylor gets hurt a lot, and Janica is surprised to see this, but Roth Taylor already knows this. And Lucy Merrill is saying to Taylor, Huh? It's already over? I guess you can't win against the top of the class, huh? No wonder. What's the point of running at a mage like her barehanded? And seeing this situation Roth Taylor is saying, Taylor McClure's life was always a series of trials. A country bumpkin and a failure of a student. An underachiever who hadn't gotten a single decent grade since he started school. A failure that wasn't acknowledged by anyone. While everyone jumped to conclusions regarding the match, in an outright wicked situation where they pitted him, even in the midst of all this despair, Taylor never lost hope. That's right, man. You can do it. And Taylor again goes ahead to attack Lucy Merrill. And Lucy Merrill is surprised that Taylor is coming again to attack her, while Taylor is injured. 
and Roth Taylor is smiling seeing this, and he is knowing what is going to happen now. And he says, and here, Lucy will use lightning magic. But Roth Taylor gets shocked, because Lucy Merrill has used wind magic to stop Taylor's attack. And with one of her attacks, she generates very dangerous energy, due to which Taylor gets very shocked. And because of Lucy Merrill's wind magic, Taylor flies in the air, and goes far and hits the pillar. When Roth Taylor sees this, he becomes very surprised, and Roth Taylor is thinking, not lightning magic, but wine magic? The referee shouts that Lucy Merrill has won the match. And all the students are very happy, and Roth Taylor is looking at Taylor and saying that after all Taylor has lost? Then Taylor starts leaving from this place, and seeing him going, Roth Taylor is thinking, wow, this is going to be a big problem, we definitely can't leave him alone. Protection of the wind. Using the power of the wind spirit automatically protects you from sudden attacks. It's a continuous magic obtained through contracting with the high class wind spirit Marilda. According to the scenario, Marilda and Lucy are originally two separate entities. Due to Lucy coming to my side, I ended up contracting with Marilda and becoming stronger because of it. The announcer announces The next combat training will be between E.D. Ross Taylor and the respected princess Fina Elias Klo. But Roth Taylor is running fast from this place, and he is going to Taylor. But Princess Fenia is coming from in front of him, and Princess Fenia says to Roth Taylor, E.D. Roth Taylor, last time you. Roth Taylor does not listen to Princess Fenia's words, and he is running very fast. And he is thinking, Taylor had to win. Picking up the sword gaining confidence. However, in the end, lost because of me. Due to the existence of E.D. Ross Taylor in Sylvania, I don't know if this has any meaning, but it's better than just sitting still. Roth Taylor is shouting and saying, Your efforts will definitely pay off. Don't feel so down. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. And Roth Taylor is thinking, If Taylor's heart is completely broken, there's a high chance that I will be forced to work hard in the end. And Roth Taylor says, Walk proudly. You did good. It's just that the opponent wasn't a good match for you. Don't let something like this get you down. There'll be many more hardships that'll happen at the academy. You should be the one to face it, not me. And a man is saying, Phoenicia, you were born with God's blessing. And Roth Taylor is telling, the first person to discover her innate insight was Emperor Klo. Her ability wasn't something given by some god. Insight detects the opponent's lies and conspiracies. The life of a royal is riddled with endless intrigue and conspiracy. From within that dark abyss, she developed this sense herself as a means of self-protection. That's why Princess Fionia can be confident about her ability. There was an ugly abyss in the eyes of the imperial family that looked up to Fionia. Even when she saw through them, the princess of love lived as if she didn't know. And Roth Taylor has come to the training ground to fight, and he is saying, Please go. Easy on me. And Roth Taylor is thinking, she had no choice but to stare straight into this person. And Princess Venia says, yes, please go easy on me as well. Then all the students start talking about Roth Taylor, and they all say, did you hear how he was yelling at Taylor? He's really persistent. Well, did he really want to make fun of someone who wasn't even able to do anything? He probably wanted to look like the nice guy by cheering on the person he was picking on. Wow, that's disturbing. He was that type of person from the start. And listening to those students, Princess Fenia is thinking, their words are correct. E.D. Ross Taylor used his position to embarrass his juniors, and when it didn't work out the way he wanted, he was caught altering the test results. Shameless. He was sure to be like that in the past. But is that really all? Earlier that was, that desperation was real. Then combat starts. And Princess Fenia says to Roth Taylor, E.D. Roth Taylor, You confuse me. I want to come to a conclusion with this duel. And Princess Fenia gets ready to attack Roth Taylor, and she has attacked Roth Taylor with her magic, and her attack is going towards Roth Taylor, and Princess Fenia is thinking, Start. With one. The magic that E.D. Roth Taylor can use is wind and fire. How will you react to this? Shaking off everything while exchanging moves a dramatic battle as a finale, getting rid of that mysterious man from my heart.
and Princess Phenia's attack hits director Roth Taylor, and seeing this Princess Phenia gets very shocked, and Roth Taylor falls away, and he says that I give up. And hearing this, Princess Phenia becomes even more surprised that how can Roth Taylor accept defeat? And she's thinking, he didn't even block after seeing the trajectory of the water ball. Then because of Roth Thaler losing so quickly, all the students start saying, wow, what was? That he's worse than Taylor. He was acting all cool, but he got knocked out with just a hit. You were so cool, Princess Fionia. That was really refreshing. Then Roth Taylor tells Princess Fenia that it was a good fight. I learned a lot. And Princess Fenia is staring at Roth Taylor, and she is thinking that man. Now that I think about it after coming to this stage, he hasn't made eye contact with me even once. He had no interest in this duel in the first place. After this Roth Taylor is running fast, and he is thinking, is now really a time to be playing duel? When coming in contact with Princess Fionia, it's best to act carefully, not letting it affect the scenario, because Princess Fionia is an important person in this scenario. But the person more important than Princess Fionia is the MC of this world, Taylor. Where did that punk Taylor go? But then Princess Fenia comes running near Roth Taylor, and seeing her, Roth Taylor also gets surprised, and Roth Taylor says to Princess Fenia, what are you doing out here without any escorts? And Princess Fenia's face is sweating, but Princess Fenia is very angry at Roth Taylor, and Roth Taylor calms Princess Fenia down and says, uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. If you're talking about the duel, I learned a lot. But Princess Fenia gets very angry, and due to her anger Princess Fenia's face turns red. Then she says, What do you mean, I learned a lot? You didn't even intend to win in the first place. You were just thinking about how to quickly get off the stage. I'm already having a hard time keeping up with the class. But that fox-like merchant is only thinking about ways to take over the school, and Professor Glass's grumpiness isn't getting any better. All the while, the servants are always on about the ways of royalty. I have enough on my mind as it is. Who are you to complicate my mind even more? And after listening to Princess Fenia talking so much, Roth Taylor is thinking, uh, what? Did she really have this much pent-up frustration? Then Roth Taylor places his hands on Princess Fenia's shoulders, and Roth Taylor looks into Princess Fenia's eyes and says, Princess, take a deep breath and please calm down. There's no need for you to get so worked up. Breathe in and breathe out. And after some time Princess Fenia calms down, then she says, What happened just now? Please forget about it. Then Roth Taylor says to Princess Fenia, I can go now. Right. And Princess Fenia is saying, That's right, I have a bad habit. I can just bluntly ask questions, but I feel like I'm constantly trying to guess and predict what's going on in their thoughts. It's probably due to living in the palace for so long. But Roth Taylor's ears start bleeding after listening to Princess Fenia's words. And he is thinking, first, let me go. I need to go find Taylor. And Princess Fenia further says, so I'll ask bluntly. You tried to cut off ties with your family because you know of their dark side, right? The reason you picked on Taylor is because you needed a reason to be expelled from the family. And listening to Princess Fenia, Roth Taylor is thinking, that's pretty. Sharp deduction, although it's mostly wrong. The thought of the Roth Taylor family having a dark side was correct. Then Roth Taylor tells Princess Fenia, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And Roth Taylor is thinking, that's something you will look into far off in the future. It's too early right now. But Princess Fenia is getting very angry, and she is saying, there's no way I'm wrong. It doesn't make sense logically. Then, just what were those words you yelled at Taylor? Why are you cheering on and supporting the person you were trying to get expelled? Did you never have a dislike for Taylor in the first place? And Roth Taylor thinks those are some sharp questions. So what? Then Roth Taylor tells Princess Fenia, it's because I just wanted to make fun of him. You know, since everyone hates me, if I cheer Taylor on, people might see me in a different light. Something like that. And Princess Fenia is getting angry, and she is saying, Anyone can tell that you're lying. Look into my eyes and tell me straight. And Princess Fenia figures out, with the help of her, insight skills, that Roth Taylor is lying. 
and Roth Taylor is saying that I am telling the truth. But this is false, due to which Princess Fenia becomes more angry. And Roth Taylor is thinking, she probably doesn't have evidence yet. And fire is coming out of Princess Fenia's mouth like a dragon. And Roth Taylor is thinking, above all, going with the original scenario is my only hope. And after some time Princess Fenia's anger calms down, then she says, phew. Fine. I can't say anything as of now since I don't have evidence. You can go. Roth Taylor is surprised to hear Princess Fenia's words. Then Princess Fenia asks Roth Taylor to leave and she says, You've been staring at the door from the start. You have something urgent to take care of, right? Then Roth Taylor thanks Princess Fenia. And starts leaving this place and he is thinking, This is the first time Fionia showed this side of hers. As someone who will affect the early scenario, She's already involved with so many people and events enough to give me a headache. It's probably my fault for being a new addition to the scenario. And Roth Taylor while leaving says to Princess Fenia, How could my burdens compare to the burden the princess carries? It might be a bit out offline, but you look really worn out. It's important to pay attention to the complicated politics, but you should also relax a bit. This place isn't like the place where you have to worry about every little thing. This is Sylvania Academy. Fionia lived her life trying to see through everyone's lies. But that was the first time someone else saw right through her. After this Roth Taylor is running again, and he is saying, This is troublesome. I lost too much time. If Taylor gives up, my comfortable life, no, this whole world might even end. And while running, Roth Taylor reaches Taylor. And Taylor is very sad, and he is sitting with his broken sword. But as Roth Taylor goes ahead, he stops and thinks so, but what? Should I say? But before Roth Taylor can say anything, a girl appears in front of him. And she refuses to let Roth Taylor come to Taylor, then she says to Roth Taylor, E.D. Roth Taylor. No more. Don't bother Taylor anymore. And this girl's name is Isla Triss. Main heroine. And Isla is saying, Taylor's already having a hard time without you. You don't need to harass him anymore. Then Taylor stands up and says you're still. In the school, huh? And Roth Taylor is thinking while looking at Taylor, he is revived. A fighting spirit that never faults no matter how strong his opponent is. A willpower that's clearly evident in his eyes. I see. While I dueled with the princess, his childhood friend and biggest cheerleader, Ala Latrice, ran out the door right away without a single glance back. And Isla is saying to Taylor at that time, You can get through it this time too. You've always been great at that. You can do it. Don't be discouraged by this, Taylor. And Taylor asks Roth Taylor, Why are you here? Do you have any business with me? But Roth Taylor is thinking, With Isla by his side, Taylor will rise to his feet again and again. And Roth Taylor says, You're great with the blade. I saw it again. What are you? Shemming? That's right. I've seen through lots of experiences with Taylor, and been with him till the end. Then Roth Taylor while leaving says to Taylor, I don't have anything like that, Dash. And Roth Taylor is thinking, let's be honest. I thought he'd save the world, so I should just worry about surviving. I treat him like a pushover since he was the game's protagonist who do all the hard work instead of me. But right now, I'm relieved. Not because the story that strayed away from the original came back on track, but because Taylor, whom I was with for so long, is still okay. That's all I need. Seeing Roth Taylor leaving, Isla and Taylor say, What the hell? Why is he acting like he's so cool? Roth Taylor is saying, Well, I can't avoid this though. And as Roth Taylor goes ahead, he hears some sound. And when he looks back, he sees a big bang. And seeing him Roth Taylor says, is it that time already? Originally, everyone was supposed to have witnessed this while in their seats at the nail building. And two girls are fighting in the training ground, Golden Daughter, Lortel and the spirit sorcerer Janica fail over sparring. Though it's in a different form from the original, I'm sure Taylor and Isla are watching this scene. Keep your eyes peeled, Taylor. Because one of the numerous trials approaching you, the Act 1 final boss is Janica Failover and Janica would have won that match. And everyone surrounds Janica. And they are all saying, Whoa! Congrats, Janica! 
Janik is the only one from our year who won against the new students. She's got a great personality, and she's great at spirit sorcery. What are you even bad at? And Janika is saying thank you to all of them. But when she looks ahead, the person she fought with is deeply injured. And they are taking him in a stretcher for treatment. And Janika is looking at that girl. And Janika is shocked to see the condition of that girl. And she is not saying anything. Unlike in the original, Lucy defeated Taylor. And it all ended with the main character of the joint combat training, being Janika Failover, who became the protector of the pride of the past enrolled students. Janika already had a lot of friends, but this incident will make things even more frantic for her. Well, it might just be for the better. I won't be seeing her at the cam anymore. When I get entangled with the main characters, my head starts spinning, already two weeks since the joint combat training. Without the main characters, I can go all in on my studies and survival without worry. I have a fishing net, so the food problem is somewhat solved. And Roth Taylor is looking at his state and Roth Taylor is currently in underwear. And Roth Taylor is saying, is it because my stamina stats are increasing? Feel like my body's getting better. It's still too early to get lazy. And Janica is secretly watching Roth Taylor. And seeing Roth Taylor in underwear, Janica starts blushing, and she says, sedition. Do you like being naked? And Roth Taylor shouts at Janica and says, what the hell are you talking about after suddenly showing up here? I just came from fishing. After this, Janica is sitting near the fire, and Roth Taylor is saying to Janica, What's so great about this place that you keep coming back? And Janica says to Roth Taylor, It's like a top secret base. So I feel like an adventurer, and that's exciting. I want to talk to you a little more, and I need some advice too, I guess? And Roth Taylor is wearing clothes. And listening to Janica's words, he thinks, Why me out of all people? And Janica says, You left early at that time, so you might not have seen it, but in the joint combat training last month, I hurt someone, you see. Didn't her opponent use an intermediate level spell? Intermediate level magic wasn't allowed, though. Well, that wouldn't be important for the good hearted Janica. Then Janica says, I keep trying to forget it, but maybe I did overdo it. I can't get rid of the thought that I overreacted. Should I apologize to her? though my friends will stop me saying she did wrong first. And Roth Taylor tells Janica, then does that. If you think you're right, the lovely and bubbly second-year student, Janica, was a treasure to everyone, precious in every way. So if she ever felt guilty or self-critical, everyone would come forward to encourage her and take her side. But Janica knew that it's nice when someone has your back no matter what, but that doesn't erase the wrongs that were done. That's probably why she came to me. Then Janica says, as expected of you, addition, you never take my side unconditionally. And Roth Taylor says, I can't help it if that offends you. And Janica says, HM? No, no. You're misunderstanding. I don't feel offended at all. And Janica is thinking, that wasn't the type of guy he was last year. Janica may be the bubbly, smiley girl but she was just as observant as the next person. Even when he asked for money during hard times, he didn't show the desperation that people usually have in such a predicament. This boy was indirectly telling her not to come close. But those sides of Ed, in fact, I find it reassuring. I YSH everyone in the world, was like you, addition staying with me is a strange comfort. The next day. This is serious trouble. The failed swordsman of Sylvania is called a masterpiece, but very few people have seen its ending. Newbies especially encounter several bad endings early on. For example, if you save a girl during an MBSH by kobolds in the class placement test, you will witness the secret of the golden daughter. She then sends someone to kidnap Taylor, and just like that, bad ending 3 Taylor has been assassinated. In the Monster Slaying Practice episode, if you skip the childhood friend Isla and form a unit with the Golden Daughter. Bed ending 7 Isla has fallen off a cliff to her death. That's because Taylor was supposed to rescue Isla, who had fallen off the cliff. If you protect the Golden Daughter from the fire spirit Tarkan, summoned by Janica, bed ending 3 Taylor has burned to death. Then someone says to Roth Taylor, Senior, can you not hear me? As soon as Roth Taylor hears this sound, 
he thinks I must run. She's... But that girl comes in front of Roth Taylor. And Roth Taylor looks at that girl and says, How long are you going to keep following me? Then the girl says, I didn't think you'd grit your teeth and ignore me for so long. And Roth Taylor is thinking, Of course, I'm going to grit my teeth and ignore you. Isn't that obvious? The failed swordsman of Sylvania's fourth heroine, the business magnate Elk Ketchum's only daughter. And this girl's name is Lortel Ketchum, the golden daughter. And this girl smilingly says to Roth Taylor, I'd like to buy two hours of your time, senior edition. And Roth Taylor says about this girl, aka newbie crusher. And this part starts, and Lortel Ketchum is saying, I'd like to buy two hours of your time, senior edition. And this happens, Lortel Ketchum, golden daughter. Lortel Ketchum is designed as the hidden hero. Unlike Fenia, Lortel was treated as a villain from the start. Her true colors were only revealed in the later half of the story. The moment they begin to understand realist Lortel's loneliness and anguish, players are at a crossroads between Fenia and Lortel. But I can't fall for her words right now. If I play this as Lortel intends, I'll lose the initiative. And Lortel Ketchum is saying to Roth Taylor, Why you can at least hear me out, can't you? I want to help you out a little. But Roth Taylor says, Don't say things you don't mean. And Lortel Ketchum is saying, Oh my, senior how can you say that about the respect I hold for you? And she comes in front of Roth Taylor, then she says, Seeing you is such an inspiration to me. Even under such difficult circumstances, you continue learning. Of course. You, being arrogant and self-centered, is not exactly unheard of. But who cares about that? Please listen to my offer first. I'll give you three gold coins as a down payment. You're quite close to senior Janica these days, right? Can you help me befriend her? And Roth Taylor gets surprised after hearing this, and he is thinking, three gold coins, huh, for some, it's a whole month's earnings. But, then Roth Taylor asks Lord Telcatchum, does the great golden daughter buy connections with money as well? And Lord Telcatchon says, keep it for now. You see, I'm aware that, the more people on my side, the better. And Roth Taylor is thinking this girl. She intuitively realized this, that she'd be in a political fight with Princess Fenia for the control of the academy, and that she must start gaining allies from now on. Then Roth Taylor says to Lord Telcatchon, sure, let's at least shake hands on that. And Lord Telcatchon is thinking while moving her hand forward. For people who have been wealthy all their lives, a moment of poverty is enough to crush their heart. But surprisingly, for people who face such predictions, chump change tends to become their downfall. They eventually sell their families, their pride, and even themselves for the sake of a gold coin. Praying on the desperate is just that easy and simple. Sadly, that's how it should have been. How amusing. And after this, Roth Taylor leaves from that place. And Roth Taylor is rubbing his teeth, and he is saying, Had I gotten that, it might have made things easier for me. Though it is a shame, I can't even imagine. The horrors I'd go through if I had gotten stuck between the newbie crusher and Janica. I have to avoid anything that increases the chances of change in the original storyline at all costs. That night, Lord Tell Ketchum didn't feel humiliated by Ed's clear, cut rejection. Understanding the pros and cons, profit, and self-interest, the perfect businessman doesn't lose any opportunity that comes within their reach. And Lortel Catchlin is saying, Oh, I didn't expect to see you here. Ah, uh, so it's you, Lortel. You look pretty different with yours hair down. And Roth Taylor tells, on the contrary, it awakened the unrelenting spirit within her to turn Janica Failover into one of her people. And Lortel Catchlin is thinking about the past. You know, there was a big fuss about me, using forbidden intermediate magic during the joint combat exercise. Then Lortel Catchlin tells Janica, It's been a while, but I wanted to apologize when I got the chance. And Lortel Catchlin is thinking, I just wanted to see how great the top sophomore student was. And Janica says to Lortel Catchlin, So the wound hasn't healed yet, huh? And Lortel Catchlin is thinking, though I had to pay a big price for it. And Lortel Catchlin laughs and says to Janica, I'm sure it'll heal quickly, don't worry about it too much, Senior Janica. And Lortel Catchlin is thinking, Janica's similar to the main characters in fairy tales. 
Would it be easier to manipulate her if I used her guilt against her? Then Janica says to Lortel Catchum, I guess the talk with Ed went well, huh? And Lortel Catchum gets surprised after hearing this, then she says, What are you suddenly talking about? And Janica says smilingly, I tell them to restrain themselves when it comes to personal matters, but the spirits sure love chatting. I hear most of the conversations around the northern part of the forest, you see. And hearing this, sweat starts falling from Lortel Catchum's forehead. And she is remembering what she said, Can you help me, friend Senior Janica? Though I'm touched by yours willingness to invest gold coins so willingly for me. And Janica goes to Lortel Catchum and tells her, You know how they say you can't buy sincerity with money. And Lortel Catchum is remembering, to me, Ed's approach is a bit more moving, you know? Then Janica laughs and says, Did I act too smug about myself? It's my first time being a senior, so I might have been boosted a little. This is embarrassing, and Janica is thinking, I'm gonna need to modify my evaluation of her. Then Janica says while leaving, I'll get going now. It takes a lot of preparation to form a contract with a high-ranked spirit, you see. I've been getting a lot more support lately, so I have to work even harder. And Lord Tell Catchon is thinking, is Janica failover similar to the main characters in fairy tales? I got that wrong. And Janica is saying, all right, Lord Tell. A person who's oblivious about the ways of the world? Absolutely not. And Janica tells Lortel Catchum, I'm sorry about the other day. You were pretty hurt because of me, weren't you? And she is thinking, despite being completely aware of the dark side of the world, then Janica says, I hope you get better soon. And Lortel Catchum thinks she's a person who maintains her cheerful personality. And Janica leaves from that place. And Lortel Catchum makes a strange face, then she says, this is hard. But just now. She looked, she strangely looked on edge, and after this Janica is saying, I gotta work harder, because it's really nice, when people expect good things from you. And then the scene shifts, and we see Roth Taylor's clothes drying in the bright sunlight. And seeing him, Lucy says it smells. Then she starts blowing all Roth Taylor's clothes in the air with her wind magic. And seeing this Roth Taylor gets scared and he says, Qua. I just hung them. Then someone says, Um, who's there? And Roth Taylor looks over there and he says, The senior maid of Sylvania's finest dormitory, the Ophilic Hall. Belmaya. She's the maid who kicked me out. And Roth Taylor says to Belmaya, Ah, you mean this. And Belmaya's saying, I know you're staying here. Lady Janica talks a lot about you. I didn't realize you were living in this state, though. I'm glad to see it's been a good change for you. And Roth Taylor's face falls after listening to Bell Maya's words, then he says, Bell's words fell on deaf ears, and my gaze kept going there. Ophelize Hall's maids are an elite group of women who perform all household chores. To perfection, including the feeding the students. Inside the basket must be, the finest ingredients that this elite made gathered from the forest. That's high-grade information on foraging that I can't get from books. Let's see. The event where Bell Maya could impact the main plot. And Bell Maya tells Roth Taylor, You don't need to be so respectful. You can talk down to me as you had while residing in Ophelis. And Roth Taylor says, No thanks. And Bell Maya gets surprised after hearing this. And Roth Taylor further says, How could I talk down to a maid who's always working so hard? And Roth Taylor is thinking, There isn't a single event where Bell Maya had a direct impact on the main plot. And Roth Taylor makes a cute face and says about that. Basket. And Roth Taylor is thinking, then I guess there shouldn't be a problem with us, extras, becoming friends. And Roth Taylor gets a notification from the system, and it says, you heard about the explanation of various edible berries, mushrooms, and herbs from Belmaya. Your creation is complete. Your crafting proficiency has increased. Newly finished product, fish farming net, installation. You've tied the net properly, secured it to a branch, and set it up so that it won't collapse in the flowing stream. Your catch might be able to survive for a few days. Crafting difficulty. Two stars. Then Roth Taylor is saying, I have plenty of meat and fish. My dietary needs are almost solved. Then Roth Taylor lights the fire with the help of ignition. Then Roth Taylor gets a notification, fire magic. 
Ignition, level 10. Wind magic wind blade, level 10. And looking at her, Roth Taylor is saying, I still have only two basic spells, but I used them so many damn times that I had reached my aimed proficiency of level aisle without even knowing. Then Roth Taylor gets another notification by the system, a newly finished product. Herbal tea. Herbal tea made from the herbs Belmaya told you it smells good. Crafting difficulty. And Roth Taylor is saying, using it while chopping firewood or cooking increases your survival rate drastically. A proof is that, I'm done with my work, and yet the sun hasn't set. If I'm honest, I have to admit I'm having a bit of fun with this. And when Roth Taylor is looking up, he sees a star. But when he looks at it carefully, he becomes a little confused. And that light is coming very fast towards Roth Taylor. And he is saying, right up until now. And when that thing collides, there is a huge explosion at that place. Due to which Roth Taylor falls away. And dust becomes dust at that place. And Roth Taylor is very surprised. What is that thing? And he is saying, what on earth? my precious camp. Then slowly the dust starts clearing, and from within that dust someone says, that just about killed me, and this is Lucy. Roth Taylor gets very surprised after seeing this saying, that just about killed me. And Ed Roth Taylor is removing dust from his clothes. And he is saying, just about killed. You. And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, she's the world's most powerful mage. Who could have? And Lucy tremblingly says, Bell Maya, and Ed Roth Taylor gets surprised after hearing this and he says, But she's a good person? I just ditched class as I usually do, but she was kinda moody for some reason, so she came with her fist clenched tighter than usual. And Lucy is telling, It was all so sudden that I just teleported out of there. I thought it would hurt. And we see that Ed Roth Taylor is getting very angry. Then Elka tells Ed Roth Taylor, You have jerky? and Ed Roth Taylor gets angry. And he hits Elka with a small wooden stick. And he says, Damn it! You ruined everything! What the hell is the life you live? And Lucy is holding her head. But Ed Roth Taylor gets very surprised, and he is thinking, she's not using any protective. Spells. Then Lucy says, I ran out of. All magic. And Lucy is looking at Ed Roth Taylor. And Ed Roth Taylor says to Lucy, No, did you? Then this. And Ed Roth Taylor has made an evil face. And he stretches out his hand and he says, Is for my the house that you just destroyed. Then the sound of Lucy screaming is coming from the forest. And Ed Roth Taylor is saying to Lucy, And this is for the oh so motherly Miss Belmaya. After this, Ed Roth Taylor is saying, I need a sturdier house. Let's build a house out of real wood. With my life as busy as it is, it's a huge plus for me to gain all the knowledge I want during my visits to the library, materials for planning and other necessities. All that's left is the method of smoothening the wood and finishing the roof, I guess? Then someone says to Ed Roth Taylor, it's closing time. You're studying really hard. And Ed Roth Taylor says, has it already been that long? I'm sorry about that. And the girl says, my name is Elka Island. And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, it's as if, she's using her eyes to please me to tell her my name. And Ed Roth Taylor tells her his name, Ed. And as soon as she hears the name Elka Ed Roth Taylor, her facial reaction changes, and tears start coming from his eyes. And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, familiar reaction. As always, this guy's notoriety just doesn't go away. No surprise there, I've only been living diligently but there's no way that changes anything. Then Elka says, you're extremely different from what the rumors say you know. You've even read all the books on elemental studies. They're hard for me to understand in just a few days. Even right now, you've read through over six technical texts while sitting here. They say you act all arrogant when they don't even know anything. I guess rumors are not to be trusted after all. I know someone who is just as sincere as you, senior. I'll be cheering for you. And hearing Elka's words, a smile appears on Ed Roth Taylor's face. Then he thanks Elka. And the girl says to Ed Roth Taylor, Have a safe trip back. I'm going to clean up and head back to my dorm. And then Ed Roth Taylor feels the pressure. And he is wondering, What is this thing? And we see that Elka is also feeling that pressure. 
and she too is very surprised. And many books are about to fall on him. Then we see that a magic circle has formed over the entire school. And from that magic circle an energy is spreading over the school. Then we see temporary camp in front of the student center thanks to the main character, Taylor, and his friend's efforts, many students gathered at the camp. It had been two hours since the unprecedented disaster. And a girl is saying, I saw it in a book on spirit magic. That's a summoning rune to summon, the highest rank spirit of darkness. Glaskin. And the princess is saying, that's bad news, because there's only one person with a high enough spirit connection level to summon that many spirits. It's highly likely our enemy is, the one who went berserk due to the spirit of darkness, the year two top student. And everyone is surprised to hear the princess's words. And then someone says, it's unfortunate, but this is not the time for this. If Ayla's right, then the barrier around the students will merely buy some time. If Glaskin is summoned, there will be more casualties. We need to head inside the student center captain of the Royal Guard, Claire says. People outside the barrier will notice in no time. If the Imperial Guard and the professors deal with it, it'll soon. Faculty of Alchemy Year One, Elvira Aniston says, if it's the spirit of darkness, its barrier must be tough. We must solve this from the inside. Principal Abel is out of town as well. If everyone here joins hands. I bet we could even take down a high rank spirit, don't you think? Then we see another boy who is very scared and he says I'm against it. We'll get through those intermediate level spirits and subdue the spirit boss as well. You're going to enter the building and take down Janica? But that's not all. There's high rank spirits inside. Two of them, at that. High rank berserk fire spirit, Tarkhan, and high rank spirit of darkness, Velosopher. That's suicide. I'm not going. And Lortel says, but did she really do this all on her own? I mean, even for a year two top student, isn't she way too powerful? She's summoning Glaskin while manifesting all these spirits at the same time? And a girl says, most of it is likely Velosopher's power. Senior Janica is merely a medium to manifest it. Spirits of darkness, natural enemies of a spirit sorcerer. Their enormous power is simply beyond a spirit sorcerer's control. The demons take that in fact control of the spirit sorcerers, are the reason all spirit sorcerers feel this way, because they become their prey. How Senior Janica, the most remarkable student in spirit studies, managed to command Velosopher isn't known to anyone. Then a boy says, that's not what's important right now. What's important right now is to decide our course of action. And there is only one person who can decide that. Princess Phenia. Please tell us. But Phenia is unable to say anything. And there is silence in this place, the moment when everyone waits for her decision. Suddenly, the guy's nonchalant remark flashes through her mind. Whatever I carry the burden, it can't be any heavier than what you carry, princess, can it? Why not have some peace of mind? How great would it be if only it were that easy? Then Phineas says, we'll enter after an hour. But only me, my guard Claire, as well as top students of each year and class will go. Only those who have proven their ability will go. So make yours preparation and toughen your mind. I'll take the responsibility. Then a boy says, Princess. We're done assessing the resident employees of the teaching area. The Audrey Hall and Potion Archives are in the middle of a strike. It's unlikely they'll join us. And Phineas says, So we're the only ones who can take any proper action. And the boy says, There's no other students aside from that. But then someone says, There is one. I'm on my way from the library. In the student library, there's a friend of mine, an apprentice librarian, and a sophomore student in there. And seeing that girl, Phineas says to her, Apprentice? What's their name? And the girl says, Elka, Elka Island. And on hearing this, Jix becomes very angry. And he says to that girl, Elka? Did you just say Elka? And the girl says, We're in the apprentice librarian class together, learning how to manage grimoires. But Jix says, Damn it. I have to rescue her right now. Elka's powerless to defend herself. But all Phenia and Lortel stop Jix. And Lortel says, Calm down, Jix. The student library is really far away. Right now, 
subduing the cause of this problem, Senior Janica, comes first. And Phineas says, that's right, Jix. She also said there's a sophomore student in the student library, didn't she? How about we believe in that student for now? You definitely said there's another student there, right? But the girl is very scared and is unable to say anything. Then Jix catches the girl and says to her, What are you hiding? Tell me right now. And the girl fearfully tells Ed Rothtaler's name, and Jix gets very angry after hearing Ed Rothtaler's name. And his eyes start turning red. And the girl cries and says, I'm sorry. He was sitting there all the way till really late in the night. I was annoyed, so I left it to Elka. All of you know what kind of guy he is, don't you? And after listening to the girl's words, all of them start imagining Ed Roth Taylor. And the girl further explains Elka doesn't care about rumors like that, so. And a boy is saying, that shameless guy and the apprentice are stuck in the library all alone. Then we see Jix, who is getting very angry. And Phenia is trying to calm him down. Then she appears in front of him, asking him to stop. Then we see that energy is still coming out from that magic circle. Then Phenia says, how about you? Have some faith in him. And on hearing this they all become very shocked. And Lord Tell is also not saying anything. But Jix gets very angry and moves forward very fast. And we also see the spirits. And Jix is thinking, if he touches so much as a hair of Elka's, and Jix is moving forward, eliminating those spirits. And he's thinking, I'm going to beat you to a pulp. Then Jix starts remembering about his past, the term. Rags to riches? Isn't nearly enough to describe how miraculous the existence of Jix, the spear of grass, is. Judging from its size, it's an adult male. Considering the state of the surrounding tree barks, it seems like. It was just here. Got him. The grasslands in the north of the empire. A land of savagery, where not even the voice of an empire can reach. A world where, at the end of the day, you have to check your own neck to make sure it's still attached. Jix was a descendant of the nomadic people who roamed around that land. By the time he came of age, he'd already been separated from his family. He had no idea about when he was abandoned, why he was abandoned, or if he would ever be able to return to his herd. He learned how to behead a deer before learning how to read. Before learning how to buy goods, he mastered how to procure supplies from corpses on the roadside. Needless to say, that was, that's the guy from the northern grasslands, right? He's a descendant of those barbarians? Rumor has it that they even eat human flesh. The life of a beast. And at that time someone had asked Jix his name. And that was Elka. And Jix had told Elka his name. And Elka was talking to him smilingly. And she was saying, you're like a wolf walking on two legs. That's when he realized. A life spent endlessly roaming the vast northern prairies. Scavenging for carcasses on the side of the road. Sleeping with the moon as his roof. This boy was a wolf pup who was abandoned by his pack. The whole time, I lived such a lonely life. The day he met his first companion in life, Jig suddenly understood the feeling of loneliness. Elka and her father welcomed me into their family. Chasing after the fast-paced life of civilization, the savage life became a distant memory at some point, and the wolf pup became a man. But if it was for the sake of protecting her, I would gladly become a beast again. I've heard rumors about that Rothtaler guy, so I know. He cheated on the test, insulted the princess, and harassed one of his juniors. And Jix is running towards Elka. And as soon as he looks ahead, there is Ed Rothtaler in front of him. And Ed Rothtaler is asking Jix, who is he? So Jix grabs Ed Rothtaler's collar and says to her, Elka, where's Elka? Why are you here right now? First, tell me where Elka is and Ed Roth Taylor tells him. But Jix throws the milk at Ed Roth Taylor, and he is going running. And he opens the door, and he says, Elka, are you okay? And he sees in front that Elka is lying on a table. And seeing her safe and sound, Jix takes a sigh of relief. He was very nervous. Then he is thinking, come to think of it, these are all bookcases that it'd be hard for a fully grown man to lift. Yet they're placed around Elka as if they're trying to protect her. Blackout curtains to block the berserk spirit's vision, 
blackout curtains to block the berserk spirit's vision. Then when Jix looks at the board, a message is written on it. When you wake up, don't panic and stay here. Everything will probably be solved before dawn, so stay calm, block the entrance, and don't provoke the spirits. Think of your safety at all costs, don't act rashly. And after reading that message, Jix is thinking, someone protected Elka. Blood, this isn't Elka's. This, despite being wounded himself, didn't even care for his body, and went so far as to protect Elka. This belongs to Ed Roth Taylor. But why? On earth. Then Ed Roth Taylor is saying, Ah, seriously. I was so close. Three hours ago. And many books were falling on Elka, and the box was also about to fall. But Ed Roth Taylor had saved Elka. And he was thinking, Thankfully I do little bit of strength training on a regular basis. And the episode's progressing faster than I expected, judging by the summoning rune. It's the start of the Glaskin showdown. I'm sure Taylor will take care of it. I shouldn't even be looking at a place like that which is full of the storyline's key characters. Because I can't let the future change. Even so, time is gold and I can't afford to sit idly. In a little while, the berserk low-rank spirits will come swarming. I should block the entrance so the berserk spirits don't come in, and use this chance, even the slightest bit, to perfect my shelter. Now I'm going to eat the beef jerky I brought and do research all night. Wait a minute. What makes Janica power so special is her strong command of spirit understanding and spirit connection. These two stats grow through contact with spirits. Since meeting spirits itself is a domain of her talent. For me, who can't even see spirits, raising my spirit stats is close to impossible. But Janica is shooting materialized spirits? This sweet ass event. Thanks for the meal. The speed was insane. Fire Magic Ignition Level 12 Spirit Magic Spirit Connection Level 7 Spirit Magic Spirit Understanding Level 7 Ignition Level 12 Even my Spirit Magic has already risen to Level 7. I was so close, just one more level. Had I reached a sum of 15 levels for Spirit Connection and Spirit Understanding, a Spirit Contract would be possible too, right? Well, I pushed myself to the limit so... Any more, and it would have been really dangerous. Then Jix is leaving carrying Elka on his shoulder, and he says to Ed Roth Taylor, What? Were you doing here? And hearing this, Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, What was I doing here? I guess he couldn't turn a blind eye to me after seeing me rest here with all my bruises? Well, I don't really need to lie for an answer. Then Ed Roth Taylor tells Jix that I was training here. And hearing this, Jix are thinking, Ha ha, jeez. Training? Only the most naive of humans would believe that. Then Jix further says, I see. I feel like I finally understand the kind of human you are. So that's the kind of person you've always been. I truly, truly owe you a big one. Senior edition. When the time comes, I'll repay this debt to you at any cost. Then Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, Ah, Elka's definitely Jix's lover. She was barely important enough to make an appearance in the setting so I completely forgot about it. But this guy is Taylor's friend who trusted him from the beginning to the end of the storyline. This guy is extremely important. So, looking at this situation, you left the student center and came running here, didn't you? If you've already confirmed Elka's safety, go and do what you're supposed to do. Get back to the student center. You don't belong here. Go and help Taylor. If you do what he says, things will work out. And Jix says, Taylor? Do you mean Taylor Mclore? Then Ed Roth Taylor says, That's Richt, that guy who's always barely avoiding failures. And Jix says, I don't know why you think so highly of Taylor. You have never even talked to him, rather than regarding him highly. It's an issue of compatibility. Especially since the shell of the high rank fire spirit, Tarkhan, can only be harmed by that guy's element slash. In Act 1, Scene 9, Taylor learns one of his key moves. Element Slash. To win this episode, that skill is necessary. If I make Taylor use that skill, he can win. Thank you you for them advice. And Ed Roth Taylor says, you don't have time for this, so move quickly. I'll be resting here for a bit. 
Then Jig starts leaving with Elka. And Ed Rothtaylor is sitting at that place and he is thinking, I've even given him a huge piece of advice, so it should unfold as per the original story, right? Wait a minute. And Ed Rothtaylor remembers what Jix told him, Taylor? Do you mean Taylor Mplore? You have never even talked to him. And Ed Rothtaylor is thinking, why is Jix not friends with Taylor yet? Act 1, Scene 9. End of Semester Assessment. In a duel, Taylor suffers one-sidedly but learns element slash. He then cuts through Jig's magic. Jix verifies his tenacity and acknowledgments Taylor. In the end, the two become friends. However, the final chapter of the first act happened a month earlier than during the original story. Episode 1. The Final Chapter. Glaskin Showdown. And Act 1 Scene 9. Didn't even get a chance to happen. So Jix ended up not being his friend. Taylor couldn't learn element slash. And right now, no one in the Ray team can deal any damage to Tarkhan. I just didn't seem to realize it, but the whole plot is already falling apart. Then the scene shifts and we see Student Center Ray team's base. And Jix has brought Elka to the Student Center. And he is apologizing to his comrades and saying, I apologize for the delay. I'll make sure to pay for my wrongdoing. And Phineas says, forget it. Even with you here, we would have lost regardless. Raid team first invasion attempt failed. Then Claire is saying, if we want to reinvade, it'll be better to get more reinforcement. I'll join you as soon as the pain in my leg subsides. And Phineas is saying, it's okay, Claire. You should rest at the base. You can't even walk properly. Princess Phineas. If you really care about me, please rescind your order. Claire, I have a heart too, you know. And Phineas is thinking, fortunately, our retreat was successful, but Claire is out of the squad. And Clebius, the top student of the first-year combat faculty, also got injured, is there? A way out. Oh, let's do our best to eliminate Tarkhan with the people we have and... And then someone says, we don't have the time to be able to go get Tarkhan. And when they see people in front... They get surprised. Because Ed Roth Taylor has come in front of them. And he is saying, judging from the summoning ritual's progress, that thing will be complete in no time. This is the last thing I wanted to do, but I have no choice. Let's split the raid team in two. I'll take charge of one side. From now on, I'll intervene in the storyline. Then Ed Roth Taylor is saying to them, let's split the raid party into two. And Clebius is saying in fear, hey you. Do you think this is a joke? And Jix says, hear him out first, Clebius. Then Ed Rothtaylor tells, we must get through the fire spirit that Janica summoned, Tarkhan, and deal with the spirit of darkness, Velosfer, who has overpowered Janica. However, as you must have already seen during your fight against Tarkhan, we can't deal any damage to it because of its shell. We don't necessarily need to go against Tarkhan. Once one team has gotten Tarkhan's attention, the other can enter the combat training grounds to subdue the suppressed Janica. Once you skip Tarkhan, you can directly confront Janica. Hearing Ed Rothtaylor's words, Lortel says, no way. This one's nothing like the Tarkhan in combat practice. We only managed to retreat out of pure luck. What if the luring group fails and Tarkhan starts chasing the subduing group? Or if what if things go wrong the luring group gets wiped out? In the end, you'll end up dealing with both at once. It's too big a risk. And Ed Rothtaylor tells him, You can only weigh the risks when you have other options, Lortel. The most important objective in the end is to take down Janica. That way, Tarkhan will be powerless too. Then Jig says the problem is, who's going to be in the luring group? And Lortel says, isn't that just picking out people who want to commit suicide? And Taylor raises his hand and he says, I'll do it. But Ed Rothtaylor tells him, No. Don't act up and get back there. You're definitely going to be in the group that enters the combat training grounds. But Taylor is saying I'm quick. I don't know how long I can run for, but if someone has to do it, it should be me. And Ed Roth Taylor is speaking to him, it seems you're mistaken. We're not picking out sacrificial lambs. We don't have to split exactly in half either. Clebius and Lortel are enough. With me included, we three will lure Tarkhan. And hearing this, Clebius gets nervous and says, Why me? 
I don't want to die. And Lortel says I must respectfully decline. And Ed Roth Taylor is saying, believe me, there's a way. The way to bind Tarkhan's feet is to. And Clebius is very scared and he is saying, fight Tarkhan with Ed Roth Taylor? I'd rather die. And Lortel says, but how? And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, TCH, we don't have much time. Then Phineas says, I don't see anything wrong with what you're saying. I still don't understand your intentions, but... Sigh, this is my order as Phenia Elias Klo, the third princess of the Klo Empire. We'll divide the raid party into two groups. Taylor, Jix, Alvira Halala, and I will be part of the group that subdues Janica. Clebius, Lortel, and Ed Rot Taylor will be part of the group that lures Janica. Lastly, I'm going to make this really short because we're running out of time. Just in case, do not die. At any cost. Then they all leave to battle. After this the scene shifts and we see, Nail Hall Corridor. And Lortel is saying, How are you are going to stall for time with that fire lizard as your opponent? And Ed Roththaler says, Just do what I tell you to. If things go according to plan, we'll definitely win. And Ed Roththaler says to Clebius, Don't worry, Clebius. Keblius the gloomy. He's very fearful and lacks confidence, in contrast to his skills. But he's the top student among the freshmen of the combat faculty. Because you'll be able to do it. And Clebius is thinking, this brat's full of confidence. Does he have a way after all? Behind that door of the combat training grounds. Janica Failover, we just have to lure Tarkhan, right? I was convinced by the princess' firm attitude and came all the way here. But since I'm not alone, I might even be able to muster some courage. But as soon as he goes ahead, he becomes very nervous. And he tells Ed Roth Taylor and Lord Tell, I it's coming. It's the start of the battle now, how I do lure him. And when he looks back, he knows that both of them have disappeared. And seeing this he doesn't know how to say anything. And there is a Tarkhan behind him, due to which Clebius is very nervous. And he shouts, you tricked me. Why on earth are you doing this to me? Oh, crazy bastards. Come on out. I hate you. I hate this world. Then we see Lortel. And she is remembering what Ed Roth Taylor told her. Get out of here. Now that we've driven Clebius into the Nail Hall's corridor, it's done. He might even be able to do it. And Lortel says, So in the end, you're going to sacrifice Clebius? It's not a bad idea. But you won't be able to evade moral criticism. And Ed Rothtaler says, first of all, it's not sacrifice. That guy, despite how he looks as a top student. And he's very resilient. Also, the most important role will be yours, Lortel. Then, outside Nail Hall. Outside the combat training grounds. Because you're in charge of securing the entry path for the subduing group and landing a critical hit on Tarkhan. Well, I don't think you should jump to conclusions about him just after listening to rumors. And Ed Rothtaler says, I'm sure everyone will hesitate and doubt themselves, but you're good at this stuff. Just blow it, UP. And Lortel has a dangerous ice attack. Due to which a huge explosion occurs at that place. And seeing that explosion, everyone becomes very surprised. And people say, what are you doing? And Lortel says, gotta go in. At the same time she is thinking, come to think of it, during the joint combat training, I blew up Nail Hall ceiling with forbidden intermediate rank magic. So that's why he left this to me, huh? You're an amusing guy, Ed Rot Taylor. Anyway, the entry path is all set. Now what's left is. Then we see Clebius, who is running away from the Tarkhan, shouting, Lortel. Ed, know that I will kill you. I'm not going to let this slide. And Lortel is saying, even if the plan is successful and the raid party makes it inside without encountering Tarkhan, Clebius and I will still have to deal with Tarkhan since it'll run around. Going against Tarkhan in the student plaza means there's no escape. You want him to die. He can't run away. The only way is to apprehend it. Because of his shell, no attacks would work anyway. Didn't you see during practice? I already lost to him once. Not to mention, not a single raid party member could even lay a scratch on him. We can use this to deal with his shell. 
Just get ready by gathering mana. What's that? Lord Tell was right. Without Elemental Slash, there's no one in the raid party who can break through Tarkhan's shell. And Lord Tell attacks the Tarkhan. And Ed Roth Taylor comes running forward, and he is saying, what we need is, overwhelming firepower. And we see that Lucy is sleeping in front of Ed Roth Taylor. And Ed Roth Taylor is saying, there are very few people who attempt to clear all of the additional achievement conditions, but I've done this countless times. Then Ed Roth Taylor lifts Lucy on his shoulders. And he's wondering, how the hell is she napping in the middle of all this? Also how it is this a damn nap? Lucy had nowhere to sleep because the shelter had been destroyed. So she went to them rooftop, where she usually naps. To be exact, she was sleeping until now because she had to be excluded from the storyline. Janica wasn't in good shape. Belle Maya was irritated because of that. So Lucy runs away, uses up all her magic, and falls asleep. Though, it was probably a tool in the game to exclude this overpowered person from the scenario. And then Lucy's eyes open. She smells something, and she's like, um, beef jerky. I smell beef jerky, and Ed Roth Taylor has taken out beef jerky. Then Ed Roth Taylor puts beef jerky in Lucy's mouth. And Ed Roth Taylor is ready to throw Lucy away. And he is saying, right now, she doesn't have the privilege of being picky right now. The target's the flaming fire lizard. Will I get the distance right? There's no need to worry. I did this a lot in the military. And Ed Roth Taylor throws Lucy towards the Tarkhan. And he is saying to everyone, everyone, get down. And the Tarkhan is about to attack, and Lucy is moving forward very fast. And tears are falling from his eyes. And Ed Roth Taylor is watching all these things from a distance. And then a thunderbolt falls from the sky, which hits Lucy. And there is a very bright light at that place, seeing which Ed Roth Taylor gets surprised. And Lord Tell would have created a barrier. And because of that power, Ed Roth Taylor starts facing problems. But he is saying, in some ways, this is the most important moment of all. Tarkhan is a high-rank fire spirit with a tough shell, disallowing us to apprehend him even if we were all to rush towards him together. But after getting hit by Lucy's high-rank magic, even that tough shell is shattering. Now, even our attacks can deal damage to him. Naturally, there'll be a lot of EXP left behind when he's eliminated. Now that I've come all the way here, I'll take what I can as well. But, the last hit is mine. Next, we are shown Janica's memory. And her mother is telling Janica, I'm so proud of you, my lovely daughter, Janica. And many people are saying to Janica, I'm so proud to be your friend, Janica. You're the hope of the sophomores. Only you showcase proper skills during this joint combat exercise. Of course, I can trust Janica to take care of it. Without you, my second year would have truly been the worst. We're fortunate to have at least you here, Janica. And in the present time Janica is thinking, everyone's here, huh? Right, I should greet them with a smile as always. And Janica says welcome to all of them. And we see that a monster has changed Janik. And that monster stands above the magic circle. And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, the nail hall. Did they start on Janica's side? I'm sure the scenario will end by the break of dawn. Fortunately, I'm not too late either. Then Ed Roth Taylor asks Lortel, where's Lucy? And Lortel tells, she's somewhere nearby, rolling around in a corner. And Ed Roth Taylor says, it would have been great if she'd finished things off till the end. And Lortel says, I'm not sure if she has the energy left to do that. Whatever, let's put an end to this ourselves. We were planning to do that as well, but... I used all of my magic to propel two chasing ice spears at him, but he's still holding out. That's one resilient son of a gun, and Ed Roth Taylor says, we've gotta slash his throat. Your ice magic isn't a great fit for precise cuts, so I'll do it. And Lord Tell is saying, Senior, you're also from the FAC Altai of Magic. It might be better for Clebius, who carries a blade to do it. But will he be able to do it? And Ed Roth Taylor says, No. I'll take responsibility and end this, so stop that monster from moving just this once. I'm betting on you with my life on the line, so do it properly, yeah? 
and after listening to Ed Roth Taylor, Lortel says things like, I'll take responsibility so you do it. And, I'm betting on you with my life on the line, it's really easy for you to say stuff like that. In reality, it's just a blind gamble. And Ed Roth Taylor says it's not a gamble. I mean, the price of one's life isn't cheap at all. This is an investment. And hearing this, Lortel starts smiling and she says, Investment. You say, that's my area of expertise. I like you more than that princess who's acting like a monarch all because she's of the royal bloodline. You put your life on the line for me, so I'll put mine on the line for you too. Here I go. Then Ed Roththaler moves forward towards the Tarkhan, and Clebius is very tired now, and he is saying, whatever. I can't do this anymore. And Ed Roththaler is saying, this guy and I are both at the end of our ropes. Despite that, T understand Clebius, who's completely friend. And Ed Roth Taylor goes closer to the Tarkhan to attack, and he is saying, not yet. I have to get even closer. But then there is a huge noise. And a huge hand starts coming out from the sky, seeing which everyone gets surprised. And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking that's Glaskin's right hand man. That means Taylor's party must have entered the last phase, right? That means things are going well as expected, but the timing isn't good. Such a scene would catch anyone's eye. But even in the midst of such a major upheaval, Lortel doesn't make any mistakes. The same goes for me as well, because I've cast this spell hundreds and thousands of times. Wind Blade. And Ed Roth Taylor cuts off the Tarkhan's head, due to which the Tarkhan is killed. And Ed Roth Taylor starts getting notifications from the system, and the system tells, you have taken down the high rank fire spirit, Tarkhan. Spirit magic your spirit connection proficiency has increased. Spirit magic your spirit understanding proficiency has increased. Spirit magic your spirit connection proficiency has increased. Spirit magic your spirit understanding proficiency has increased. Spirit magic your spirit connection proficiency has increased. Spirit contract slot has been unlocked. You can now make a contract with a spirit. Then Ed Roth Taylor starts looking towards the sky, and he is saying, Ah, that Taylor. We see Taylor moving towards that huge hand. And Taylor attacks that hand. And because of his attack that big hand gets cut into many pieces. And there is a huge explosion. And Taylor is falling downwards. And Taylor's voice now turns white. And Ed Roth Taylor is saying, He indeed is the protagonist. So, it's over. After this, it is morning. And they are all sitting under a tree. And Lortel is saying, I've met a lot of people in my life saying that they're seriously risking their lives. But most of them were cowards. And Ed Roth Taylor says, What's so? And Lortel says, What's with that, senior? We got through a life and death crisis together. You're lacking a bit too much of sentiment. Let me introduce myself formally once again. I'm Lortel Kecklin. And Ed Roth Taylor shakes hands with Lortel. But he realizes something, and when he looks at his hands, he has three gold coins in his hands. And Lortel is saying, I won this time. Caught you off guard, didn't I? Now you owe me a favor. What to do now? See you again, senior. And Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, is she going to keep in touch? But I don't really want to get involved with her. And then Taylor comes to that place, and he bows down in front of Ed Roth Taylor. And tell him, I'm resenting you right now. I believe you know the reason for that very well. And looking at Taylor, Ed Roth Taylor is thinking, Taylor's appearance. So his swordsman form manifested itself. It was exactly the same in the game. It looks cool. And Taylor says, despite all that is a debt still a debt. So, thank you. But we see that Clebius is saying to Taylor, Taylor, you don't need to show respect to someone like him. There's no telling when he'll backstab anyone. I almost died because of him. But we see that Venia, Lortel, and Jix speak in support of Ed Roth Taylor. And Jix says, Quiet down, Clebius. And Lortel says, You sure have a lot to say, Clebius. And Phenia says, Clebius, shut up. Ed Roth Taylor, you did a lot for us this time. I can recommend you to the student council and... But Ed Roth Taylor says, no need. Lucy was the biggest contributor in taking down Tarkhan. 
Taylor also slayed Velocifer and Glaskin, so please focus on that. Then a girl says, oh my, you're tossing the credit away. It's no secret that Lucy and Taylor did a great job. We're talking about things besides that. Or are you embarrassed? But Jigs come in front of that girl, and he says to her, he's a senior. Show respect, Alvira. But that girl says, why do you keep siding with him? And Jigs says, show him respect. And Ed Roth Taylor is listening to all of them. And he has a lovely smile on his face. And he's thinking, I've been keeping my distance from the main characters to not affect the original storyline. However, now that I get to look at all of them at once, I can't help but feel warm and fuzzy. After all, I've watched them play their part in this world. And solve their own problems time and time again. Taylor, who grows stronger with each trial, and Isla who grew stronger with Taylor. Phenia, who embraces her destiny as a monarch, and slowly becomes an adult. Jix, who finds his own path in the midst of civilization. Clebius, who goes on to become sure about himself, and Elvira, who realizes that life isn't all about fun and excitement. L'Oreal, who spends her life buried in gold coins, cross-examines her life. All of them were main characters who had their own role to play. And at the end was the trophy named Success. It's because I knew that, that I turned away. Then he starts going inside that broken school, and as he goes further, there is a box in front of him. And Ed Roth Taylor goes ahead and opens that box, and he is saying because no matter how I thought about two, something felt off. I had to come here. To shine light on the success of the protagonist, someone had to stay backstage. And Jenica is smiling from inside that box. This part begins. And we see Janica, who is sitting inside the box and smiling. And seeing her, E.D. Roth Taylor starts remembering some things that he had said to Lortel. He said, come to think of it. Why did Janica go berserk? And Lortel had said, I think I have an idea. I once, happened, to see Janica's room, you see. And E.D. Roth Taylor is thinking, each and everything in there, was a beautiful symbol of sincerity and gratitude. But there wasn't even any space to open a book on that huge desk. The post-its pasted on her wall weighed down her shoulders like rocks. The solution to it all was way too simple. She simply had to take off the post-its on the wall and keep the countless gifts on her desk in some corner of her room. But Janica's misery came from her inability to do that like a main character in a fairy tale. She was obsessed with the fact that she had to honor all the goodwill and sincerity she received from the world with utmost diligence. There's no need to explain how reckless that was. The Lossifer exploited that darkness. Janica going berserk was to be expected. However, why did it happen a month earlier than it was supposed to? Joint combat training originally, the hero of that scenario was Taylor, but since Lucy sent him flying in one blow, all the students became Janica's fans. Marilda and Lucy's contract was the reason Taylor got blown away in one attack. Lucy was able to form that contract because she frequently visited the forest in the north, since it contained the perfect place to nap, and the person who built that perfect place for napping was a certain character who was supposed to have left when the first act started. Then Janica laughingly says to E.D. Roth Taylor, I think I get why Lucy naps here. It's so cozy. I didn't expect you to find me so easily, though. I think the others forgot about me amidst the whole chaos. Kinda hurts. After wreaking havoc on such a magnificent stage for everyone to see. I'm in the back seat now, that's it all over? I thought they'd look for me, saying. Where's Janica? Says the person who was hiding so one would find her. I can't really argue with that. I didn't expect you to find me right away. I wanted to just stay inside there a bit more. And E.D. Roth Taylor asks Janica, why? So Janica says, because I'm about to ugly cry right now. And E.D. Roth Taylor doesn't know what to say after listening to Janica. Then he begins to remember what the spirit wolf told him. He said, it's asking you to make sure you save Janica one day. And E.D. Roth Taylor starts remembering that wolf's message. It feels as though he asked me to save Janica from falling into a situation like this one. But that can't be. I'm the only one who knows the future. He must have thought that while everyone gave Janica attention and pressure, in fact, be someone Janica can rely on. In the end, 
Janica Failover failed. She tried forming a contract with a high-ranking spirit but her haste during the summoning ritual made her fall prey to the spirit of darkness, destroying the faculty building in the process. She studied and trained in magic till late at night every day. She always smiled at her family, friends, and teachers who genuinely cheered her on, but while seemingly living up to everyone's expectations, she must have had a really hard time in private. Since that process itself was so beautiful, paradoxically enough, the failure itself was also beautiful. I can't tell how comforting these words would be to her. And Edie Rothtaler says to Janica, Hey, Janica. You've worked hard. And Edie Rothtaler is thinking, atop the stage, the parade of the proud main characters takes place, and applauses of price come rolling in. On the other hand, behind the stage, it's dark and quiet. The first act's villain exits the stage right as the main characters move forward, and then tears start falling from Janica's eyes, she starts crying. And E.D. Rothtaler is saying, I've witnessed the completion of the first act countless times. But it is only now. And as soon as E.D. Rothtaler looks up, he gets very surprised. Because many spirits start coming around Janica. And E.D. Rothtaler looks at them and says, I couldn't see them before that I feel like I've properly seen it to the end. Then E.D. Rothtaler starts getting notifications through the system. Spirit Magic Spirit, Connection Level 10. Spirit Magic Spirit Understanding Level 10. Low Rank Fire Spirit Elgo is interested in you. Low Rank Wind Spirit Driss is interested in you. High Rank Wind Spirit. Marilda is showing extreme interest in you. After this. I zero days have passed since the end of Janica's disciplinary committee trial. Janica acknowledged all her mistakes and testified that she would willingly accept her punishment. However, during the first trial, all of Janica's professors and friends expressed utmost support. During the second trial, Phenia said that she wouldn't be trialed for the attempted murder of royalty. She testified that Janica, overpowered by Velosfer, didn't do that intentionally. Lortel came forward to address the loss incurred. Alp Merchant Association completely compensated the funds for restoration without asking for anything in return. Though they did add a conditional clause in the contract to reduce the custom fees on the school supplies that they distribute to half. In any case, the outcome of all this was the removal of any benefits given to yearly top students, the taking back of all prizes and decorations of glory and disqualification from entering the Ophelous Hall from next semester, probation for ten days, suspension for twenty days. It felt like they just shot a heart-touching montage in a coming-of-age drama. After this, two girls are talking. And one of the girls says, but Janica's shoulders seem droopier than usual. She must be under a lot of stress. In that case, we gotta step up, huh? And those people are having tea party together. And a girl is saying, don't even hint at the Glaskin incident. Don't do anything that might bother her. Don't you ever ever ask her about how she feels and stuff. Make sure you keep the converse tie and strictly about personal affairs. That's it for the simulation. Are you ready, Annis? Now, come on. Janica. And Janica says to both of them, liking and loving someone. Why do you think there's such a difference between the two? Both of them are surprised to hear Janica's words and they say, Why would you suddenly mention something like that? So Janica says, This is about me, friend. That friend had a dream, you see. Then Janica starts thinking that she is sitting in one place, and she is very happy. And then someone calls her name, and when she looks back, she sees that E.D. Roth Taylor has come sitting on a horse. And he is looking at her with great love. Then Janica goes to him and makes E.D. Roth Taylor wear the flower crown, and tells him, I prepared this for you, Ed. And they both have a lot of fun together. Janica is thinking about all this, and she is saying to both those girls, that same dream over and over. And my friends, I mean. And after listening to Janica's words, both of them get very surprised, and both of them are thinking, Janica, you were on probation for ten days. You couldn't even meet any of your friends. And Janica's friend says, I see. What else did that friend say? Then she starts running away from this place, and she is saying, she said she'd be in her room blankly staring somewhere, and suddenly that person's face comes to her mind. Oh my! 
Silly me. I was supposed to help the assistant professor. By now. And her other friend is trying to stop her. And Janica is lost in her thoughts. And then Janica says bye to him. And her other friend is thinking, I need to approach this slowly and carefully to avoid hurting Janica's extremely delicate heart. If things go wrong, the whole student body will find out. The love story of the Janica Fay lover? I can't believe this. Then she says to Janica, Janica, shouldn't you think of this simply without much complications? Whether you like or hate someone is kind of a mystery, don't you think? Isn't it better for you to just be honest about your emotions right now? I mean, for you, friend. Then Janica says you're right. I think you hit the nail on the head. As expected off you, Clara. And the girl says, also, from now on, try to be careful when you're talking about such sensitive topics. It won't be great for you, your friend's reputation. And hearing this, Janica says, gasp. Oh, you're right, Clara. This could have been bad. I prevented the rumors for now. Thanks for giving me genuine advice. I gotta get back to the Ophilic Hall now to report my suspension. And the girl says, yeah, I'll be there for a bit. I have to sort out my thoughts. Then she says goodbye to Janica. But that is very disappointing. After this we see E.D. Roth Taylor. Who is thinking? Before this, I relentlessly saved money. But thanks to Phineas' petition, I was waived from next semester's fees. And with the gold coins I got, I bought a few tools. And as he goes ahead, he sees Janica. And looking at her he is thinking, I avoided her all this time. But now that the first act where Janica was the main character is over now. Then E.D. Roth Taylor says to Janica, Hello, Janica. I guess your probation is over now, huh? And E.D. Roth Taylor is thinking, It'd be good if I take the first step and say hello, right? But as soon as Janica sees E.D. Roth Taylor, she gets scared and hides behind a tree. And she is thinking, Be honest about your feelings. But Janica starts running away from that place. And she is saying, I have stuff to do at the Ophilic Hall, so I'll see you later. Bye. And E.D. Roth Taylor is thinking, for Janica, the difficulty level was too high. And Ed Roth Taylor, who made the kind Janica be truthful, was kinda amazing in a way. Right. Let's not be too clingy. I'm about to be busy too after all. Finally it's time. To make the hut. Day 1. I chose the location to build the hut. I chose a wide area under the shade that didn't stand out too much and started working peacefully. Day 3. I started gathering wood. I had become quite proficient at wind blades, so that went smoothly. Day 6. I paused gathering wood for the time being, since the semester end results were out. I got pretty high scores for my practicals and my results for the theory exams were higher than the average freshman. Special incidents Janica continued to ignore me. Janica's friends, Clara and Annis looked at me as if to say that I shouldn't dare to show my face. I don't plan to either, day 18. The lumber work is almost complete. I wonder if there was ever someone who became this proficient at wind blade. Day 20. Vacation started. Now I could put all my time into building the hut. Special incident I went to check the trap I set earlier only to find Lucy caught there sleeping peacefully. I should stop using beef jerky as the bait. Day 27. Senior maid Belmaya came to give me some herbs and mushrooms. She asked me how things were going with Janica. When I said she might hate me now, she tilted her head. Day 30. With one pillar as the center, the outer lumber walls collapsed. I realized that simply making and fitting joints properly wasn't enough to make it stable. This feels like shit. I ran into Janica's group again at the bakery. Janica just flat out ran away the moment our eyes met. Don't tell me it's... Day 37. Jiggs came to help me. As you said, Taylor seems like a pretty good guy. Does he? Great. It's going as per the original storyline. Are we going to hammer nails all over this side as well? No, leave that side. That's for the chimney. Day 45. Neither the flooring nor the walls are attacked. There's not a single piece of furniture either. It was just a hut made of crude logs of wood. But there are outer walls and a ceiling too. If I shut the door completely, 
insects can't get in. And E.D. Roth Taylor is very happy because he has built his own house. And then he gets a notification from the system, new complete creation, log hut. Made by stacking logs trimmed to a standard style, by stacking them on pillars and crossbeams. It only has walls and a ceiling, but there's nothing inside. Crafting difficulty dash. Four star. Your creation is complete. Your proficiency in creation has increased. And E.D. Rothtaler is sitting in his house saying, I have a home now. And Janica is secretly looking at E.D. Rothtaler. And E.D. Rothtaler is saying, I'm done with the walls, flooring and the fireplace. It'd be good to put up a fence as well. A storage for the firewood and a few other stuff would be great too. And then E.D. Rothtaler hears the sound of something falling on the roof of his house. Then when he came out of the house and looked at his terrace, he came to know that Lucy was sleeping on top of his terrace. And seeing him E.D. Rothtaler says, this isn't a damn nap tower. And then Janica calls E.D. Rothtaler and says hi to him. And E.D. Rothtaler is a little surprised to see Janica. And E.D. Rothtaler asks Janica, how come you're all the way out here? Then we are shown the scene of some time ago, when Belle Maya is combing Janica's hair. And she is saying to Janica, While I was in the forest last time, I went to young Master Ed's campsite and I found the sight there truly shocking. And Janica says, And you mean the hut. Then Belle Maya is asking, How do you know? So Janica says, I saw it while I was passing by. And Belle Maya says, I see. Anyhow, he said he built it himself but it was way more remarkable and well-built than I expected. I was quite taken aback. After all, I didn't know he was talented at such things. I also wanted to look in there. You know, roam around to take a look, see how firm it is. Janica says, I see. So you're curious about stuff like that too, huh, Belle? And Belle Maya further says, of course, I'm human too. Anyone who saw a hut like that in their way would be curious about who built it, how they did it, and how it is from the inside, wouldn't they? It's an extremely expected and natural phenomenon. I tell you, expected and natural. And Janica is saying to E.D. Rothtaler, I was walking by, after seeing Marilda, and I saw the hut. So I dropped by. I mean, anyone who saw a hut like this would be curious about who built it and how it is from the inside, wouldn't they? Isn't it? It's to be expected. It's only natural. Isn't it? And E.D. Rothtaler says, I guess. Then Janica says, It's a great hut, Ed. So E.D. Rothtaler says, I only built it recently, but didn't the spirits tell you? And Janica says, I mean, they told me a little bit, more like what they say passing by. Just mentioning it like, Ah, there's also the hut and nothing much. You can see his fine muscles when he has his top off. His arm muscles were a bit thicker. The fine veins near his collarbone compared to the back of his hand are, just a little bit. I don't talk a lot with the spirits, you see. I don't really know how exactly you live, you see. And Janica's nose is bleeding. Then E.D. Rothtaler asks Janica, Wanna come and take a look? It's just a log hut. And Janica is a little surprised to hear E.D. Rothtaler's words. Then she says yes to E.D. Rothtaler, and she starts seeing E.D. Rothtaler's house and starts praising it. After this, both of them are sitting outside the house with a fire lit. And Janica is saying to E.D. Rothtaler, I owe others a big one this time. Princess Lortel did so much, some of my friends even said they'd let me borrow money for their tuition. How will I ever pay them back? And E.D. Rothtaler starts looking at Janica. Then tell him, if you can't just don't. Isn't it a generalization to think you gotta pay back what you owe? And Janica gets surprised after hearing this and she says, W.H. Whoa, I've never thought of it that way. And E.D. Rothtaler is thinking, right. That's the kind of person Janica is. She can't understand that the incident happened because the weight of all that sincerity of others pressed her down. Despite there being so many supporting her with tuition fees, or rather investing in her, she resolved to move from the Ophelis Hall with state-of-art facilities to the outdated Dex Hall, all because she wanted to owe less to others, even if a little bit. In Ophelis Hall, there's one room for every student, but in Dex Hall, there's eight or more students in a single room. 
Spending the whole day being looked at with envy would be like being chained in a prison for Janica. In the end, it won't solve any of her underlying issues. The vicious cycle still hasn't ended. And Edie Roth-Taylor says to Janica, If you ever want to be secluded, you can drop by any time. I don't mind. And listening to Edie Roth-Taylor's words, a smile appears on Janica's face and she says, Yeah, that makes me really Haru. Hey, Ed. If you ever feel overwhelmed, or can't handle something alone, I hope you make sure to tell me. When that happens, I'll help you at all costs. And after listening to Janica's words, a smile appears on E.D. Rothtaylor's face and E.D. Rothtaylor says, Overwhelmed, you say? And both of them start looking towards the sky. Then E.D. Rothtaylor is saying, The second semester is approaching soon. That's about the time of the start of Act Two. Sage's sealed grimoire the great sage Syavania made records of aspectual magic in this book. Aspectual magic is a high-difficulty-level magical branch that's known to alter the very principles of nature. This little worn-out book will cause a storm. Lortel is saying, as I thought, it smells of money after all. That will devour the entire academy. Regardless. And E.D. Roth-Taylor says to Janica, thanks for saying that, but that won't happen. And E.D. Rothtaylor is thinking that won't happen. At least not to me. You're going to have a hard time, Taylor. It has nothing to do with me but it'll seriously. Be hard as hell. I'm cheering for you, man. After this the scene shifts. The failed swordsman of Sylvania. The honor students at Ophelis Halls are almost guaranteed a life like nobles. First choice of seating in a class. Guaranteed freedom during meal time. Special maids and tons of other convenient perks at a whole nother level. This is where the problem arises. There was heavy rain to the southwest side of the Valori area around the time of returning to school after vacation. As per the academy, only the Ophelis Hall students were provided horse carriages and boats to return to school. If they couldn't return on time, they were given the perk of relaxing for a few days. The Dex Hall's inferior students who trudged along and returned even through the whole downpour but failed to do so in time, feared deduction of points and felt frustrated. Eventually, the pent-up feelings exploded in front of the Ophelic Hall. All of this played out. Proposition relating to the commute of the Ophelic Hall students. And Lortel is saying, Rain's coming down really hard, just as I thought. Within the hands of a merchant. The merchant got in touch with the rep of the inferior students in advance and that guy only cared about screwing over the academy and Ophelis Hall. Discontentment was already through the roof. Only thing they needed was a common justification for the inferior and regular students. Will Lane, who was adept at provoking and manipulating others with his words, would pull the trigger for the rest. The justification was already set, a clear discriminatory treatment against regular students who had to return to school no matter what through the downpour. A proposal suggesting a proactive change in the deadline to return to school supported by acknowledging the exceptional treatment Ophelis Hall students received. Ophelis Hall's head maid and a part of the Academy's Administration Review Division were already on Lortel's side. They will fervently support Lortel's proposal. At this point, it didn't matter whether the Academy actually accepts the proposal or not. Just the thought of discussing this as a solution will be sufficient to infuriate the inferior students. They'll amplify the entire controversy into the largest, most vocal issue. Ophelis Hall is adorned with art pieces donated by noble and affluent families. And even the walls, carpets and hardwood furniture were crafted by artisans. The more damaged assets, the better. While they were at it, it'd be best if they completely destroyed part of the Ophelis Hall. The more they run amok the more of a critical hit it'll be to the finances of the academy that's already in a predicament due to the Glaskin incident. And as the negotiations for the Sage's Sealed Grimoire were currently underway, it granted the Alp Merchant Association a distinct advantage. The Sage's Sealed Grimoire is like the heart of Sylvania yet people are willing to offer even their own hearts in times of desperation. I wonder when the rain will stop. There isn't a single ray of light in this gloomy sky. It's like the sky I saw in the slums wearing those shabby rags. I can't help but mock myself for feeling relieved. This unbelievably romantic land of learning has way too many lights. The image of me living in utter darkness, 
covered completely in dirt, is way more vivid to me. The traces of conspiracy on top of my desk are the proof to that. They're traces of a person who has lived a life, never showing the slightest sincerity, and always betraying and suspecting others. While desperately struggling to survive, this is what I turned into. But that doesn't change the essence of my filthy self. So I frantically look for my own kind. Even in Sylvania, where full of bright and radiating people reside, there must be someone among them who would acknowledge the disgusting life of a gutter rat covered in filth. The endless lookout for my kind never stopped despite the vain hope in my heart. How lonely, because one's true self never changes. To make it through the miserable reality, Lord Tell always took the same stance. Lord Tell was the dark curtain that covered the gloomy reality behind the stage at all times. The audience called her. Black Veil. Then the students are shouting and saying, We can't take this treatment anymore. This is the land of learning. At least guarantee us equality in grades. In the original storyline, the Ophelis Hall occupation incident is a story of how the main character stops the inferior students who we provoked against Lortel. There are middle bosses from first to fifth floor of Ophelis Hall who interrupt the main character and help the inferior students. The middle boss of the is floor. Toad the decoy. Toad mocked by Taylor calling him a loser and got beaten up by Taylor's friends. So he held a grudge against them and was bought off by Lortel. His role was to overpower the rookie maid protecting the first floor, open Ophelis Hall's door, and let the students in. Then E.D. Roth Taylor breaks the door and comes out, and everyone is surprised to see him. And those people are saying, Ophelis Hall's doors are open. Let's go in. A subpar decent treatment. We're not asking for a lot. Just a subpar decent treatment. Let's make our voices heard. The maintenance office is on the fourth floor. Let's take over that floor and make an announcement. Once the students get to the first floor, the Act 2 Phase 1 middle boss tote plays a certain role. The role of stopping the main character and his friends who'd come after them. Then the man says, so you're the one Lortel bought off, that's right. Originally this role was, yes, I'm the one in charge of checking the first floor and being on the lookout. Supposed to be totes, Ed. Rot Taylor. So why the hell did I become a middle boss?